Hello grade 12s, welcome back to our channel. My name is Velilin Ngosi. In this video, we are doing introduction to human responding to environment. So we will be looking at the structure of a brain and the structure of a spinal cord. Uh, here I have the examination guideline. We know that the examination guideline is one of the important tools that every student must have because the, this guideline tell us the thing that the examiner want us to know before we sit for an examination. So here we are on responding to the environment in human. So this chapter falls under paper one, which accumulate 54 marks. So here we will be looking at the introduction and the human nervous system and the central nervous system. So I will explain this content in this video, all this content, I hope you have this guideline as a student. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So the things that the examiner want us to know, we must know that human have two system to respond to the environment. So we have nervous system, we have endocrine system. So by the endocrine system, we're talking about the endocrine glands uh, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, pancreas, etc. These are the endocrine system. And then we have the nervous system. By nervous system, we talk about brain, spinal cord, and the nerves. So these are two systems that respond to the environment. It's either external environment or internal environment. But they are the ones that respond if there is a change in an environment. So now I will explain the difference between a nervous system and the endocrine system. So you must know the difference. Uh, here is the difference. So with nervous system, the response is rapid. So they respond very quickly. But in endocrine gland, the response is very slow because the hormones must be secreted into the blood and then they travel through the blood. And then here, electrical impulse is sent. This one uses electrical impulse and then while endocrine gland hormones are secreted, this one uses hormones. And then in the nervous system, the impulse travel via neurons. So we have a neurons all over our body. While endocrine system hormones travel via blood. So this one is the reason why it's, a, it's so slow. And then this one target a specific organ like an effect. So this one is targeting a specific organ, while the endocrine gland it target a wide spring organ like cells, tissues, muscles. This is the difference between a nervous system and the endocrine system. So make sure you understand these two concepts. And then another thing that the examiner want us to know, we must know the importance of a nervous system. So the need for a nervous system in humans. So nervous system responds to a stimuli. When we talk about stimuli, we talk about something that causes changes to our environment or to our body. So what the nervous system will do, will detect the changes in the internal and the external, thus it, and then allowing the body to react to these changes. So, and then the reaction maintains homeostasis. This nervous system makes sure that our body responds accordingly so any change that is taking place is either externally or internal to maintain homeostasis. So by homeostasis, we mean homeostasis helps the body to maintain a stable internal environment. And then another function of the nervous system is the coordination of various activity in the body. So it makes sure that the parts of the body functions at the same time and then in a correct way. Like they don't clash or do something. So it acts as a control center by sending message signals throughout our body. This is the function of the nervous system. So it makes sure there is a coordination in our body. So another thing that the examiner want us to know is the central nervous system. So central nervous system, we're talking about the structure of a brain and the structure of a spinal cord. So we must know that the whole central nervous system is surrounded by three membranes that are called meninges. So these membranes are called meninges in all together. 
So the name of the membranes is dura meta, which is the outer membrane, arachnoid, which is the middle membrane, and the pia meta, which is the inner membrane. So in all together, these membranes are called meninges. So we must know this thing before we sit for an examination. And then another thing that we must know, we must know how to label the structure of a brain and we must give functions of each part. And then I will give you the names and then explain the functions. First, let me start with cerebral. Cerebra. So cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and then it's divided into two hemispheres. We have right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. So it's the largest part of the brain and then it's divided into two hemispheres. And the functions of the cerebrum, it controls voluntary function. So voluntary function are the function that we do voluntarily. Like if I walk, so I will voluntarily walk. So it's the responsibility of the cerebe cerebrum that I walk. And then it interprets sensation. By sensation, I'm talking about senses. Like like when I see, when you look at the, the, the video, you see what is happening. So this is interpreted by cerebrum. And then for judgment and the reasoning. Like cerebrum is responsible for like complex thinking, like planning, imagining, making a decision. So it's another function of the cerebrum. And then the next part that we must know is a uh, corpus colosseum. So corpus colosseum is this middle part. This part here in the middle is called corpus colosseum. And the function of the corpus colosseum is to connect the two cerebral hemispheres. So like I said, cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres. And then this corpus colosseum, it connects the two cerebral hemisphere and then we must know the function of the corpus colosseum and we must be able to label it and then another thing that the examiner wants us to know we must know the cerebellum so cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain so cerebellum is this part this one this red part here is the second largest part of the brain and is located and below the cerebrum so here is the cerebrum the cerebellum is located below and then at the back. So the function of the cerebellum, it coordination of voluntary actions. So like, like I say, when you talk about voluntary, talk about the actions that we do voluntarily. Like if I walk, cerebellum will make sure that my legs are working and then I will also maintain balance. So it, it coordinate these two. When I walk, have to walk straight so cerebellum will is responsible to make sure that this thing they coordinate it happens like without falling or doing something and then another function of the cerebellum is to maintain muscle tone is to maintain balance and then maintain equilibrium so these are the other functions of the cerebellum and then another part that the examiner want us to know is the medulla oblongata so medulla oblongata is this part medulla oblongata is the lower part of the brain so here we have a brain this lowest part is medulla oblongata and the functions of the medulla oblongata it controls breathing controls peristalsis controls heartbeat and then controls swallowing so this uh this part here are uh, involuntary action so Medulla oblongata controls involuntary action. And then another thing, it transmits impulse from spinal cord to the brain. So spinal cord is this part. This part is a spinal cord. So medulla oblongata will transmit impulse from the spinal cord to the brain. So it takes information from the spinal cord to the brain. And then it controls less important reflexes like blinking, coughing, and sneezing. So it control like when you blink your eye, when you cough, when you sneeze. So it's the responsibility of the metalla or planga. And then another thing that the examiner want us to know, we must know a spinal cord. So spinal cord is this part here. It continue, proceed down. And then here is the structure spinal cord. 
a spinal cord, we have white matter. This white part is called white matter. Then this gray part here is called gray matter. And the central part, we have a central canal. And then it has a ventral side and the dorsal side. The back side is called the dorsal side. And the front side is called the ventral side. Like this root here, it's a ventral root. And this one is a dorsal root. So the dorsal root has sensory neurons while the ventral root has a motor neuron so this is the structure of the spinal cord and then the function of the spinal cord it transmits impulse from the receptor to the brain so it takes information from the receptor this information will come via the sensory neuron and then travels to the brain inside the spinal cord and then it also transmits impulse from the brain to the effect so as the information from the brain because the brain need to respond as the brain has responded this information passes via the spinal cord to the effect so to the targeted organ or to the target organ these are the functions of the spinal cord and then it contains reflex center that functions automatically to protect the body so I will make a video about the reflex action or reflex act. So reflex act is the action that is used to protect the body. This is the things that the examiner want us to know. So I uh, don't want this video to be long. This is the end of this video. If you have watched it to this far, I say thank you very much. Give this video a thumbs up and then subscribe to our channel. So if you are studying, say good luck with your studies. Thank you very much.